Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to everyone in this today's session. Today we are going to deal with uh, the BIOS uh, chapter 4 that is absorption by roots. Today we are going to see absorption by roots and the processes that are involved which are very mandatory for this uh, chapter. Okay. Okay, so today we are going to start the plant physiology. Okay. And in this plant physiology, um, this is our first chapter, absorption by roots. And we are going to see some processes involved as well. So firstly, we are going to see absorption by roots. Okay, so children, what do you mean by absorption by roots? So, do you think that absorption, of, uh, absorption by roots is only occur within a um, fraction of seconds? It is not like that. It took... Uh, means it took many phenomena or many things okay means each and every part is having each, uh, its uh, significance okay this is not like that uh, that it uh, it is very rapid process absorption by roots that water will come and absorb by the roots and it will go to the tip of the plant to the tip of the leaf it is not like that it uh, it have to means passed with several things, with several uh, membranes and with several stuff which is inside our plant. Okay, so let's see how roots absorb the water or minerals. Okay, so yeah, let's see. So yeah, this is a plant. Okay, so absorption by roots. The roots not only fix the plant in the soil, giving it support, but the most important and life-supporting function of the fruit is to absorb water and minerals, nutrients from the soil, and conduct them into the stem for supply to the leaves, flowers, fruits, etc. So, absorption of uh, absorption by roots. First of all, the function of roots to fix the plant inside the uh, soil, so that the wind, the storm, or anything that we had discussed in geography as well, okay, right now. All the things is uh, unable to uproot the plant, okay. The, all these uh, winds and all these uh, factors are unable to uproot the plants from the soil. So that's why roots are, roots should be strong, okay. How roots should be strong? It should be go to the, inside the uh, soil. It should be penetrated inside the soil so that the, uh, the uh, plant will be strong okay now what is transpiration children this will be your next chapter okay the fifth chapter transpiration this is very interesting chapter let me tell you in the, uh, brief transpiration is a process by which uh, the uh, leaf okay the uh, the water okay the water it evaporate in a form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the leaves that is the uh, from the aerial parts of the plants that is the leaf okay means water has been evaporated in a form of water vapors from the aerial parts of the leaves that is the leaf aerial parts of the plant that is the leaf what is the aerial part of the plant the leaf is the aerial part of the plant because they are having the minute opening that is known as the stomata so they are the aerial part isn't it so the passed away of the uh, water in a form of water vapor not in a water, in a form of water vapor, that is transpiration. That we will discuss in the next chapter, okay? All its phenomena and all the things, okay? Uh, that will be very short chapter. It will uh, finish in a, uh, with a particular time, okay? So first of all, let's see. This is the function of the roots the, to fix the plant, okay? And uh, uh, it also absorbs some water and minerals so that plants will, uh, will got its particular growth, okay? So, this is all its function, okay. Next, need of water and minerals for plants. Why do we need of water and minerals to the plant? There are some uh, factors, okay. Some four purposes are there. Uh, with the help of these things, we need water and minerals for the plants. For photosynthesis as well, for making food. If your mother makes food, if she cooks food she should she also need water isn't it without water she won't be able to uh, cook the food okay so what is i think it is a vital product it is very mandatory product that is required for each and every food whether it is a human food 
or an animal or plant food okay so this is a vital product so photosynthesis um as you know what is photosynthesis what is used up in a green leaves as a raw what material in the synthesis of glucose okay water has been used in green leaves as a raw material in the synthesis of glucose it forms glucose okay so for photosynthesis uh, the water is mandatory next is transpiration as i told you a large number of um, water has been evaporated from the aerial parts of the leaves that is the uh, uh, leaves okay so uh it gives a cooling effect to the plant it gives a cooling effect see when we perspire when we perspire then we after perspiration after sweating we uh, felt some ease right some cooling effect in our body plant also do like this they also perspire they also evaporate the water in a form of water vapor in the scorching summer days so that they got a uh, cooling effect okay so um during transpiration for cooling in hot weather for producing a suction force as well suction force means a water will go from the roots to the tip of the leaves the minerals and all the things will also go with that particular thrust okay with that particular thrust it, it will also go thrust means force okay now what is transportation this was transpiration and this is transportation transportation of a substance is a ball to the shoot means the substance from the root to the shoot the transportation of minerals and all the things takes place in this transportation okay this is happened due to the thrust okay the suction force now mechanical stiffness what is this stiffness water provides turgidity which is crucial for the stiffness of plant tissue now what is turgidity turgidity is that state where the water is unable to store any more water it is unable to accommodate any more water means the uh, at the at the time the what uh, the plant is having the maximum amount of water then the plant is known as turgid okay when a plant is having a maximum amount of water means uh, he is unable to accommodate any more water now okay suppose you took food now your food uh, your stomach is full it is full so you won't be able to take one more bite of food okay now you said that uh, mama my uh, stomach is full now i am unable to eat one more bite uh, like the uh, plants also do they also unable to take any more water because at the time the water inside them are max is maximum okay so that is the turgidity and at the stage that is known as the turgor turgor okay and the pressure that happens that is known as the turgor pressure we'll talk about each and every one so stay tuned till the end so i hope mechanical stiffness is also clear to you okay now what are the characteristics of roots hairs for absorption of water means what is the role of a root hair what is the root hair children the roots okay the sub Uh, dividing particles of a root is known as the root hair uh, this one these these are the roots isn't it the subdivided parts of the root this one this one this is the root hairs okay what is this uh, what is the role of these root hair let's talk about <coughs> the root hair uh, present large surface area the more the surface area the greater is the absorption means the more the, uh, if the surface area of the root is more so is he is able to, to take more water he is able to uh, intake more water from the soil so that means suppose uh, you are having a large amount of team with yourself you are having uh, you are 10 fellows okay and you are doing one particular work so it will took less time and you are only f- uh, three fellows and you are doing a very uh, strong or very wide work so it will took a lot of time okay so since the uh, root hairs are also if the root hairs are enormous if they are big so they are able to took more and more water from the soil so that it will be easier and if they are short and if they are very less so it will be tough work it will 
it will be time taken to absorb water from the roots the first factor is this second factor the cell membrane is semi permeable thus it allow the entry of water molecules and required substance into the root hairs means roots uh, the plant is having semi permeable membrane what is the semi permeable membrane this is an uh, this is a membrane which only allow some particular substance to pass through it okay like uh, they won't allow uh, the solid substance like salts uh, sorry like uh, uh, solid like uh, solid like stuck uh, substance they won't be allowed okay so cell membrane is also a very it plays a very uh, very uh, like a crucial uh, uh, what we can say role okay third is the vacuoles present in a root hair cell contain cell sap we know that vacuole inside the cell in the plant cell okay that are the, that are present in a root hair they also contain the cell sap and this water concentration in the cell sap is lower than the concentr uh, concentration of water in the soil means the concentration concentration means uh, what we can say the liquid part okay that is more uh, that is more than the surrounding water in the roots okay so uh, this uh, promotes the absorption of roots by uh, absorption of water by root hair that's why it allow it allow uh, to uh, up, uh, to intake the water from the root hair okay so these three are the characteristics for the root hairs to absorb water the first is the surface area of the root should be enormous okay next is the root hairs contain cell sap of higher concentration than that of the surrounding water and the third one is the root hair have a thin wall okay so i hope this is clear to you <clears throat> let's move on to the next phenomena that is absorption and conduction of water and minerals okay means how water how plant absorb and conduct water and minerals Let, that we are going to see there are some factors there are some uh, processes which take takes place in this process okay so like be humans i am telling you everything each and everything with an example so that you can understand in a very good manner okay like a human being if he or she took food okay so there are some particular processes means uh, the food will go from our uh, uh, food food pipe okay then in the, uh, inside the stomach then in a large or sh short intestine then it will be Uh, out of the body that it will be eliminated by the uh, eliminated inside from the body in a form of excreta so there are some uh, like a uh, particular processes okay so, so like the plants also have some particular processes for absorption and conduction of water and minerals okay so let's see the entire this is the okay the entire mechanism of absorbing water and minerals from the soil by the roots is its movement through the thickness of the root and subsequently its upward conduction through the stem is the result of five main phenomena means all the process from the roots the water will conduct it from the root hairs till the tip of the plant leaf till the tip of the plant leaf how it goes so this is the, uh, this is happen due to some several uh, phenomena five phenomena basically the first one is imbibition next is diffusion next osmosis and active transport and tertiary and facility okay now you know diffusion and osmosis isn't it now what is imbibition so let's see each and every one throw an example okay imbibition imbibition is a phenomena by which the living or dead plant cell absorb water by surface attraction means whether it is a living being or a dead be uh, dead uh, stuff or dead thing everyone absorb water okay everyone absorb water by the surface attraction okay how uh, see uh, you haven't see uh, that in a rainy day or in a humid day in a monsoon okay in this water day okay watery day when water flows too much okay in rainy day our our doors wooden doors basically or our table wooden table or wooden these things they swell up 
right they swell up in our uh, moisture day when the moisture is high when the humid humidity is high so what happened they uh, they swell up when they swell up so they are hardly they are hard to close them okay they stuck they stuck and they are uh, very uh, like tough bird to push them in world okay or out world so this is because of their imbibition only because the uh, the surface area the surface of this door okay it absorb water why, uh, why it absorb water because of rainy day or humid day the cells of wood they open or they loses up okay and they losing up so the water will enter inside the wood and they will swell up okay they will fill that gap that is back end okay so uh, due to this reason our doors swell up okay and it is harder to close them so this is because of the imbibition okay this is because of the imbibition only next is diffusion now you know what is diffusion diffusion is a free movement of molecules of a substance from the region of the high concentration to the region of the low concentration when the two are in a direct contact this is mandatory to define osmosis and diffusion this thing is mandatory they are in which contact direct contact diffu in diffusion and in osmosis they are semi permeable membrane okay they are through semi permeable membrane okay so diffusion uh you had read this def definition from the very uh, very first class like sixth class okay when you was had this first ge geography then you read this what is diffusion it is a free movement of molecules of a substance from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration when the two are in direct contact Mental means when the two things are in direct contact the uh uh and uh, this is a free movement of molecules so this molecules will go from the lower region to the uh, high uh, from the uh, higher concentration to the region of lower concentration okay so we can uh, understand this phenomena diffusion by this process okay so i think you had done this process in your lab as well if you haven't so try in your home as well you can try this process at your home you have to take two uh, you have to take one vehicle okay weaker not vehicle <laughs> you have to take one vehicle okay and some water some quantity of water then you have to put some dye like uh, you can uh, put anything okay uh, there are several dyes okay you can put anything you have to put that particular dye inside the weaker after some time you will see you put the dye in a corner you have to put the dye inside in the corner of the weaker after some time after some fraction of seconds you will see that this bottle this dye okay it will uh, uh distributed uniformly okay it will distribute uniformly all over the water okay like this this will uh, distribute uniformly all over the water and uh, after some time it will turn whole water pink okay so you can uh, take the potassium permanganate crystal as well this is the potassium permanganate crystal okay so cameo h okay uh, so why it happened you put this dye this uh, uh, potassium permanganate crystal at one corner of this water why it uh, distribute uniformly inside the water means it turns whole the water erosion pink okay why it is so this is because of the diffusion only okay this is because of the diffusion diffusion is the free movement of molecule it is the free movement okay of molecule from the region of the higher concentration to the region of the lower concentration where will be the higher concentration here only because the water uh, the color this color is this is uh, gathered okay so here will be a high concentration so it will move from its higher concentration to the lower concentration that is where the water is where the color is not present that is the lower concentration only and the higher concentration is that where the color is present where the color is gathered okay it is gathered together so it will turn whole water pink this is the 
this is the best example of diffusion okay so i hope diffusion is clear to you next is osmosis now what is osmosis osmosis is nothing but it is the it is also the movement of water molecules from the region of their higher concentration here it will be the region of the it here it also be the region of the high concentration and osmosis also have in a region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration but the difference is just it goes through the semi permeable membrane okay it concentration through a semi permeable membrane only water molecule move from the higher concentration to the lower concentration okay so this is diffuse and osmosis okay osmosis is the free movement of the water molecules from their region of higher concentration to the region of their lower concentration through a semi permeable membrane okay only water molecules move from higher concentration to the lower concentration only water molecule is allowed to move from its higher concentration to the lower concentration okay now this osmosis it can be inward or it can be outward as well okay so uh, this depends on the concentration of the solution if uh, concentration is high so it will be inward if if it is low so it will be outward so on the basis of this concentration we had this uh, we have divided this osmosis into two parts the first one is the endosmosis the first uh, second is the exosmosis now what is endosmosis endo means involved and osmo means thrust thrust okay means the or, or involved thrust the involved pressure or the push okay the involved diffusion of water through a semi permeable membrane when the surrounding solution is less concentration concentrated this tends to swell up the cell if see if the inside water the surrounding solution of a um semi permeable membrane is less concentration that the this uh, that the particular uh, uh, thing so it will swell up the cell and in in uh, in ox osmosis in exosmosis the uh, outward diffusion of water through a semi permeable membrane with the surrounding solution is more concentration and this tends to shrinkage of cell in ox uh, in osmosis uh, the outward diffusion of water it is through the semi permeable membrane and uh, which is on surrounding solution is more concentration the surrounding solution is more concentration it is denser than uh, the involved okay the uh, the liquid that is present inside the cell so this is uh, endo on uh, sorry endo osmosis and exo osmosis so now osmos osmotic pressure what is osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is nothing means it is the capacity that how much water can be taken by the osmosis okay it is the capacity that how can how much water can be taken take in okay uh, by the osmosis it is the measure the measure of this capacity is the pressure osmotic pressure okay it is the minimum pressure that must be exerted to prevent the passage of the pure solvent okay so this is osmotic pressure now what is tonicity tonicity and you have read these terms for a very first time so listen it carefully okay tonicity is the relative concentra concentration of the solution that determine the direction and extent of diffusion is called a tonicity means this tonicity tells the direction of diffusion if it is concentrated so diffusion will occur in different direction if it is less concentrated concentrated so the diffusion will occur in a next in opposite direction so this determine the direction of diffusion tonicity okay it is the concentration of solution okay how concentrated is a solution is so this determine that how will the uh, diffusion perform its work in a slow motion or in a rapid motion so this is determined by the tonicity only okay based on the solution there can be three types of tonicity Hi isotonic hypotonic and hypertonic Now what is isotonic isotonic uh, this if the concentration inside the cell and surrounding cell 
okay inside the cell and surrounding cell are same they are similar okay they are having the same constitution let's take an example in a in a weaker i have kept honey and outside the weaker i have also have kept honey so both the constitution are same they are similar okay so there will be there will be no osmosis because they are they are having the same concentration okay that's why the name is isotonic iso means same and tonus means tension concentration okay so so we had discussed what is isotonic isn't it so if two uh, liquid have uh, same concentration suppose uh, inside uh, in a plant inside the cell uh there is a same uh, there is a same kind of concentration and outside the cell the same type of concentration is you are having so if they are same similar type of concentration are there okay so it will be isotonic okay the relative concentration of the water will be same. okay the water concentration as well as the uh, solute okay uh, inside the cell membrane if they both are same so they will be isotonic isotonic means is uh, same tension same uh, concentration okay so they be uh, such in this condition in this type of solution there will be no uh, mo movement of um, molecules okay there will be no movement of water mo molecules around the cell mem membrane so there will be no osmosis okay there will there will be no osmosis in isotonic because the both the concentration is same okay inside the cell and outside the cell both are same so there will be no net movement of the <coughs> water okay i hope this is clear to you now what is hypo hypotonic hypo hypothalamus did you remember anything inside our brain we are having a one part hypo uh, hypothalamus hypo means below isn't it means you have to remember these things by the name hypo hyper okay so hypo means the lower concentration of the solutes outside the cell means outside the cell there is a low, low concentration and inside the cell there is high concentration so the result will be the water uh, the result will be the water molecules will move from the outside uh, uh, from the cell okay from outside into the cell okay the water will go from uh, from outside inside the cell from the outside area inside the cell the water movement will take place so this will be hypotonic so there will be what endo osmosis okay there will be endo osmosis endo means outside osmosis the osmosis osmosis will take place outside that's why it is hypotonic now hypertonic hyper means what do you mean by hyper hyper means higher isn't it so the solute outside the cell is high okay it is having the high concentration than inside the cell the constitute relative to the uh, cell that is uh, near to the cell outside the cell membrane that is high okay than the inside the cell then there will be hypotonic okay so there will be water molecule inside the cell okay there will be water uh, in c in hypotonic there will be water molecule outside the cell in hypotonic there will be a movement of water in inside the cell that's why the uh, osmosis will be exo osmosis exo means inside okay i hope these three terms are clear hypotonic hypertonic and isotonic this is very important thing this will come in your examination for two marks definitely definitely this will come learn this by the trick or tips okay as i tell you, I, as i told you iso means same tonic means concentration the same concentration inside the cell okay inside the cell and outside the cell see we have cell okay the cell all in uh, okay the cell inside the cell we are having some fluid isn't it and outside the cell we are also having some fluid okay both the fluid sorry for the disturbance children so if both the things are same so they will be isotonic okay iso means iso means same okay the meaning of iso is same <coughs> hypotonic means higher uh, sorry hypotonic means uh, lower okay hypo okay hypothalamus ne uh, remember by the tricks 
okay which i am giving you hypotonic if the concentration okay if the concentration is low of the solute to the outside of the cell they will be hypotonic and if it is high then it will be hypertonic i hope this is clear to you tonicity okay now tonicity is the uh, you can say it is the common relative concentration of the solution it is the common means it can be uh, it is the general definition right so it is the uh, it is said to be general uh, concentration of the solute uh, of the cell solution okay so i hope this is clear to you tonicity what is tonicity now let's see what is active and passive transportation no oh, sorry transport <laughs> what is active transport what is passive transport so active transport in active transport it is the passage of a substance from its lower to higher concentration through a living cell using energy from the cell means the passage from the lower concentration to the higher concentration okay from lower concentration to the higher concentration it is active transport and passive is like diffusion okay it is diffusion passive refers to the requiring no input of energy means there is a free movement of molecules from their higher concentration to the lower concentration in active the movement uh, the movement should be from its lower to higher concentration and active in passive there will be higher to lower concentration okay the difference is that now let's see turgidity and flaccidity as i told you what is turgidity earlier the cell is said to be turgid when it is having the maximum amount of water okay it is having the maximum amount of water if uh, means it is unable to accommodate any more water now it is having the maximum amount of water if he enters more water so it will burst it will burst okay this is turgidity and flaccidity is just opposite when the cell is not having any more water okay when it is totally uh, like shrink okay it is totally shrink okay contract it's totally contract means it is not having any more water all the water has been uh, passed out from the cell then it will be flaccid cell okay flaccidity okay so in turgidity the uh, cell will uh, it will swell up and in flaccidity the uh, cell will shrink okay it will shrink okay so see if uh, there will be uh, equal uh, concentration of water okay um, so means oxo osmosis if there will be oxo osmosis hypertonic so the water will enter it will burst okay the cell will burst so this is turgidity and flaccidity i hope this is clear to you turgidity is this it is the state when cell is unable to accommodate any more water means it is having the maximum amount of water okay so it is said to be turgidity and cell is said to be turgid form in a turgid form okay cell is said to be in turgid form means we do not say that it is turgidity we said the cell is in turgid form okay and flaccidity is just opposite when it uh, when it is not having a uh, when it is not having the water inside it all the water has been passed out from the cell okay it is from the uh, it is uh, outside of the cell so it is said to be flaccidity Fla the cell is said to be flaccid okay it is not having a uh, water so it will shrink out okay it will shrink so i hope turgidity and flaccidity is clear to you next is plasmolysis now children what is plasmolysis see it is very easy these three terms are very easy but this will come in your examination for two marks okay plasmolysis is nothing the uh, like a uh, this protoplasm it is uh, it is a shrink okay it will uh, uh, go away from the cell wall okay the protoplasm then it is uh, said to be plasmolysis okay it only occurs in plant cell okay when the protoplasm of the um, plant cell it uh, goes away from the cell wall it goes away from the cell wall then it is said to be plasmolysed plant cell see it is the turgid plant cell means the protoplasm is, at, is still attached to the cell wall okay but in this 
protoplasm this dark green part it is the protoplasm it leaves it left the cell wall and it is said to be the plasmolysed cell and this process is known as the plasmolysis i hope this is clear to you now what is the uses of turgidity in plants what is the use of turgidity okay obviously the turgidity provides rigidity to the soft okay tissues such as the leaves it gives uh, the rigidity rigidity means the uh, like uh, we can say that it makes the plant cell rigid okay so next is tiger pressure helps to push through the hard ground tiger pressure helps the to apply the thrust from the ground and this tiger in root cell it will uh, helps in root pressure okay and next is it 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 is help it helps in closing and opening of the stomata okay tiger and it is known as a tiger movement okay this uh, closing and opening of um, stomata is happen due to the tiger uh, tiger movement okay so this is the use of turgidity okay so i hope this is clear to you uses of turgidity now next is root pressure what is root pressure now uh, root pressure is the pressure developed in the roots due to the inflow of water brought about due to alternate turgidity and flaccidity of the cell of the cortex of the root hairs cells which helps in pushing the plant's sap upward it is pressure that roots apply to the plants okay it applies to the plants okay this is the pressure root pressure is the pressure that is applied by the roots to the plants from the plants okay and yep uh, it helps to uh, push the uh, plant sap out uh, out up bold okay up right to the position of the uh, plant okay it helps to the uh, to provide the uh, to give the sap cell sap uh, from the roots to the tip of the plant this is root pressure it is root uh, pressure means the pressure that is applied by the roots okay why roots apply pressure to throw the or to give the sap to the leaves okay this is because of the root pressure happens next is oh this is guttation now what is guttation children to uh to uh do, do you have read uh, this uh, guttation uh earlier okay do you had uh, read this guttation word earlier might you do not okay guttation as you can see in the picture as well guttation is a uh, coming out of water from the corners of the leaves okay guttation is the coming out of the water from the corners of the leaves of the plant okay so this will come in a form of a dew in the morning we have seen the dew okay you have uh, went to the you have gone to the uh, uh, like a garden in the morning in the sunday or any other day okay when you have your school off so you have seen that in that particular place where the grass is uh, where the plants and grass are there okay in the garden or anything like this so you have seen that the leaves the leaves of the plant is having the dew it is having the dew or the water droplets that water droplets or droplets is not coming from the sky it is from of the guttation only i ponder when i was a kid i ponder that it is it comes from the uh, from the sky okay how beautiful they are looking and my parents also told me that it comes from the sky it is very uh, useful for our eyes okay but it is it is not like that it is because of the guttation only guttation is the process in which the water droplets comes uh, from the corner of the leaves see you can see here only this is a leaf and from the corner of the leaves the water droplets are coming okay this is known as the guttation i told you i think in a previous chapter okay i had told you in the previous chapter so due to the high pressure in the root the force of waterfall the way through the stem and 
comes out through the end of the leaf vein the water uh, appears as tiny drops along the margin of the leaves this is known as the guttation it is because of the high pressure okay it is because of the high pressure inside the root that's why this water comes due to the high thrust due to the high pressure from the roots to the leaf that's why this um, water droplets comes from the margins of the leaves and this process is known as the guttation okay and we used to said that it is dew but it is not like that it is not a dew okay so i hope guttation is clear to you this is very important this will come this will also come this point root pressure and this point turgidity and plasmolysis all these points are very 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 essential you have to learn them okay next are some experiments are there okay i think this was your last uh yeah this guttation was your last term or your last uh, work now you are having your lots of experiments okay you are having a lots of experiment okay so i hope this all things are clear to you guttation or else i told you once more in a very short form okay everything absorption roots you know there's no need to photosynthesis you know transpir transpiration is nothing but the uh, loss of water in a form of water vapors from the aerial parts of the leaves in you know, aerial parts of the plants okay transportation the transfer of the minerals and waters from the roots to the plants this is transportation okay mechanical stiffness it gives the turgidity to plants okay turgidity means the it is a form when the water is unable to accommodate any more uh, when the plant is uh, when the plant cell is unable to accommodate any more water the plant cell to be turgid form okay and uh, this characteristic the root should be enormous then uh, so that uh, it is uh, it is able to extract more water from the soil okay next is cell membrane uh, is semi permeable so that it allow the water molecules to um, required to the substrate into the root hairs okay and the vacuole present in the soil uh, in the root hair cells uh, contain cell sap so the water concentration in the cell sap is lower than the concentration of the water in soil okay next is absorption by and conduction we have different like imbibition diffusion osmosis active transport turgidity okay we have different processes okay so imbibition it is uh, due to the surface attraction okay imbibition occurs what is imbibition right now i told you that imbibition it is the phenomena okay it is the phenomena by which um, this uh, um, uh, the living or the non living cells okay they absorb water okay and they absorb water by the surface attraction that's why our wooden doors uh, swell up uh, when they come in a contact of moisture diffusion is nothing but the free movement of the molecules uh, uh, from the high concentration to the low concentration in direct contact osmosis is also the movement of the water molecules from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration in a semi uh, through the semi permeable membrane okay now what is active transport we had discussed this as well active transport is uh, uh, this is uh, um, see this is active transport it is the passage of substance from its lower to higher concentration active transport it is the passage of substance to, uh, from the lower to higher concentration uh, uh, through a living cell membrane using energy cell okay and passive transport is also it is uh, just diffusion only okay it uh, means it is a free movement of molecule from the higher concentration to the lower concentration passive uh, passive transport okay next we are having the turgidity and facility turgidity you all know when the cell is unable to accommodate any more water okay means it is having the maximum amount of water so it is known as a turgidity the cell is known as the turgid and the process is known as the turgidity and flaccidity when when a uh, cell is not having any more water it is it is shrinkage okay so the process is known as the flaccidity and cell is said to be flaccid i think a whole, a whole things are clear to you as you can see here as well okay this is water when it enters so the cell will swell up okay the vacuole will swell up and when it goes out so it will shrink is does it in facility plasmolysis the uh, means uh, the removal of the protoplasm 
from the uh, from the cell wall okay the it went away so it is plasmolysis okay does it use up does it it give the rigidity and softness to the plants okay uh, uh, tugger pressure helps to push the push through the hard ground and it holds up the pressure root pressure as well tugger pressure okay and it helps in the uh, mechanism of the closing and opening of the uh, stomata okay so this is the uses of targetative glands root pressure it is the pressure that is developed inside the roots okay uh, due to uh, due to the alternative uh, flaccidity and turgidity of the cell so that it can push the minerals and waters upward the sap upward okay gutation gutation is the uh, coming out of the water in a for, in a uh, in, through the uh, uh, through the cortex of the leaves through the like side of the leaves okay in a form of droplets gutation now these are all the points as you had read okay i had told you all the points in a very short form and at once as well okay so you are able to understand this if you won't understood it okay if you did not understood it so you are able to understood understood the each and every point that's why i told you now there are some experiments okay children so the first ex experiment is absorption of water by roots okay what is the aim aim is the the thing let me to tell you you know i know but let me tell you once again aim is uh, we wrote aim to uh, said to told the examiner that what we what we gonna do okay what we are gonna do inside the experiment okay so we are going to do to show that roots absorb water okay we are going to tell uh, that root uh, the roots it absorb water okay so what we have to do what is the procedure for it you have to take two test tubes test tube a and test tube b okay you have to apply one you have to apply one balsam to plant balsam is a, a type of plant you can apply any plant okay the plant should be short okay you have to apply uh, you have to keep one plant example balsam okay now you have to put the water you have to took two test tube in one test tube i'm telling you in container one okay in container one you have to put uh, some water some amount of water then a plant okay and then you have to put some oil okay why you put oil i told you okay you have to put some oil okay this is and this is your setup setup one now you have to do setup two for setup two you have to take you have to take same uh, test tube and you have to apply uh, you have to put you have to pour some water okay inside test tube q this container q and you have to uh, put some oil as well on the surface of the uh, water as okay this is the oil so after some time okay after 2 or 3 hours you have seen that the uh, container p the container p okay the water from the container p is decreased okay it is decreased but in container q it did not uh, uh in container 2 it did not happen okay now why do we put oil oil uh, we put oil because so that uh, to prevent the evaporation okay to prevent the evaporation of the water we put oil okay so we put oil so that water cannot evaporate okay now what you have seen that uh, container p the water is gradually decreased okay by in container q it is it is same okay it is same uh, quantity of water i know my question is why water is decreased from uh, in the con container p why it happens my question is this can anyone answer though we have put the oil oil prevents the evaporation of the uh, plants uh, evaporation of the water oil prevent the evaporation of the water okay that's why we put the oil at the surface of the water then also in container p the water has been decreased is what is the reason behind it the plant isn't it the plant is the reason only plant uh, uh, the water will conduct from the roots of the plants till the tip of the leaves then it will be transpiration 
it it is due to transpiration the water has been evaporated from the plant and that's why the water is decreases from the from the container p this is because of the transpiration so who is responsible for the transpiration the roots only because they are also they are only the conducting the water from the soil okay uh, from the uh, bot, uh, from the test tube they are conducting the water to the uh, plants from the test tube so this is happening to the with the help of roots so we can conclude by this experiment we can conclude that absorption of water by roots is happening okay roots are responsible for the absorption of water that's why the water in container p is decreased okay while in container q it did not decrease okay because it is not having plant okay it is uh, it is having the absence of plants that's why it is similar okay so this was your first experiment i hope this is clear to you so observation test tube a level of water is decreased while in test tube b no change in water of level so this is because of the plant only plant uh, it trans uh, it's the, uh, due to transpiration of the water the water in a container p has been decreased so next is next experiment is a bold conduction of water through roots now we have to show that uh, the conduction of roots uh, the conduction of water is happening from the roots okay to the plants so what we have to do for this the same setup you have to take a beaker some amount of water in it and put a plant okay now the difference is that you have to put some red erosin color as well red erosin is a type of color okay you have to put some red erosin dye inside the water okay after some time after an hour or uh, after one day you will see that whole plant when you cut the plant the whole plant turns into pink okay this is because of the color colorful water now with this we can conduct that water is uh, conduct uh, the conduction of water takes place from the uh, roots through the roots that's why the color uh, went to the leaves right so i hope this is also clear to you you have to take the erosion solution okay red erosion color it will transport from the roots to the stem and stem to the leaves and when you cut the leaves okay then you can you are able to see that uh, they are also turns to the red color why it is so this is because of the water that is conducted from the roots to the plants okay so i hope this is also clear to you next is conduction of water through xylem what you have to do you have to conduct the water through the xylem what is the aim to conduct the water through the xylem isn't it procedure is a a twing with phloem uh, removed and xylem intact you have to remove the phloem in uh, in a first setup you have to remove the uh, phloem and you have to keep the xylem this is the xylem part okay now in uh, b setup you have to twing with uh, xylem remove and phloem intact you have to remove the xylem and uh, keep the phloem okay the twing are then fixed to stand and are allowed to remain for 2 days within uh, with their low and immersed in a water now what uh, you have to keep this plant like this for the 2 day okay now what you what did you absorb you absorb that in plant a the leaves are normals because there is xylem isn't it the in uh, in setup a the leaves or the leaves are standing erect they are standing erect why it is so because they are xylem and you know xylem is uh, it it is the uh, it is ha it helps to the conduct of uh, water and uh, food okay and in a setup b the leaves are wilted okay the leaves are wilted in setup b this is because because this is because of the absence of the xylem because xylem has been cut from the plant so what is unable to pass out through the leaves that's why the leaves are it is uh, like wilted okay so this shows that xylem is necessary for the conduction of water okay while phloem is necessary for conduction of food okay 
xylem is present in set of one, that's where the leaves are erect. While in set of B, xylem is absent, that's where the leaves got wilted. Okay, so I hope xylem is uh, this experiment is also clear. Now, downward conduction of water from leaves through phloem. Now, how do we? Uh, this is the phloem part. Okay. Now, a ring of bark is removed from the healthy potted plant. We have to remove a bark. Okay, we have to remove this bark. Okay, from a healthy potted plant, deep enough to penetrate the phloem and cambium, but not the xylem. Okay, after some week, it will absorb that the part of stem ab uh, above the ring has grown in diameter, and the part below stopped growing. This indicates that trans uh, translocation of food from leaves takes place through the phloem. What you have to do? You have to remove the phloem. Okay. After some time, you are able to see the upper part of the phloem is soiled up. This is because of the conduction of roots. Okay, it is unable to reach to the phloem. That's why it swells up. So this shows that phloem is necessary for the transportation of the food, and xylem is necessary for the transportation of water. We had discussed both the experiments. Okay, so uh, this was our all the experiments. These are very interesting and very easy as well okay they are very easy now you have to what you have to do you have to this is our last part factors affecting absorption of water and ascent of sap some factors are given here that affect the absorption of water and ascent of sap so water movement is regulated by root pressure and transpiration although all those factors which affect the rate of water absorption and transpiration also influence the ascent of sap. High temperature, uh, atmospheric pressure, okay, wind velocity, and low atmos uh, atmospheric humidity. These all are the factors that uh, affect the uh, absorption of roots or absorption of water, okay, and the ascent of sap as that of uh, transpiration soil water deflected also decreases the ascent of sap indirectly by influencing the absorption of water so these all are the factors that affect the absorption of water and sa ascent of sap okay we had discussed all the factors that are affecting the uh, absorption of waters okay like root pressure is also a factor okay and transpiration pull Adhesin. Adhesin is nothing but it is uh, it is caused due to the water. Okay, it is caused to the water to stick to the surface of the cell because you are drawing more water molecules from the below of the leaf cell loses the water during transpiration and this pulling force provide the provide by the leaves is especially important in tall trees such as the pine tree or the coconut tree, which is not have enough root pressure. Okay. So I hope these all factors are clear to you. Okay. So with this we come to an end of our chapter. Okay. I hope this chapter is clear to you. Transpire absorption by roots. So thank you for being there till the end of this session. Okay. So yeah. If you love this video. So give this video a big like. Okay. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed the channel press the bell icon as well so you did not miss any of the video of my which i will post post in the future okay so yep there's a lot of crowd sorry for this and yeah bye guys have a good day have a beautiful day and yeah you will succeed in your life bye